This video will be about the rigging or putting the parachutes and shock cords inside the level two. My name is Tim Van Milligan, and we're at the point now where we can start putting things together for flight. Um, first thing we want to do is to uh, take out our shock cord. Now remember, this is the longer shock cord because this is going to be the drogue chute, which uh, opens up at Apogee. And we want the longer one in there because uh, the rocket's going to be traveling at a high rate of speed if it's arcing over. And the longer the shock cord, the lower the stress on the parts. Uh, once the, the, the Apogee chute is out, now the rocket is slowed down. So the main parachute, its shock cord is going to be the shorter one, which we haven't installed yet. So this is the 10 foot and this is the 15 foot. Uh, you have two shoe protectors and they have a buttonhole and you'll have to cut through the buttonhole with a knife uh, just to kind of open it up just like that and then you're going to take your shock cord and you're going to go through twice And the reason for this is we don't want this shock cord to, you know, to be sliding around on the, or the, the, the shoe protector to be sliding around on the shock cord. Um, and then I want to put it as close to the tube as practical. It doesn't have to be exact. So my rocket's down here. Let me pull it up here so you can see what I'm doing here. I am catching everything. <laughs> Definitely catching everything. Okay, so it's right now it's positioned, eh, you know, eight to ten inches away, and that's fine. Um, and then I'm going to pull on the other end, make sure I'm pulling the right end. This end. Okay, so now it's it's looped twice through there, and it's about that far away from the the, the end of the tube. Then we're going to take this end, and this is going to get tied to the base of our eBay. Um, so now this is my base with the single slot, so that's how I can tell them apart. Um, and then I'm just going to tie this on here. Use your favorite knot. People always ask me what knot I use. I just use a slip knot, but you can use your favorite knot. Um, just make sure, you know, that you tug on it good so that it doesn't come loose. Um, I always like to, t to uh, you know, to take that loose end and tape it down just to give it a little bit of extra security so that it's, uh, you know, doesn't start to unravel on me. Okay, so that's on there. Now, if you need to open up your eBay, you can just, you can still untwist it like this. So you don't need a quick link. Um, and in fact, <laughs> um, having the uh, shock cord attached to that Lifting eye bolt means there's less chances of losing that because that thing is not cheap. Okay, so now this is our drogue chute. This is an 18 inch small parachute. And you want to gather the lines. And, and the lines actually, there's, if you do it right, um, one of the loops goes across the canopy. So that one there, so that when you hold them up, you know, you can put your hand through it and none of them are twisted. You know, sometimes if they go around the outside, you'll have one that's twisted. Um, but the way we make ours is so that none of them are twisted. And that way it's, it's, either, it's easier to gather them up and then it, it's less of a chance that the parachute's gonna spin on the way down. Okay, so then I'm gonna take that loop that I just made and this is also gonna go through there. up 
open up the loop and then take the, the apex of the canopy and put it back through. Before you pull it tight, um, just double check that you got all the lines here even. So I want to gather all the corners together and pull them tight. And then, and then pull tight this way. And just kind of loosely, you know, keep those kind of loose until you, until it gets good to the end and then you can pull them tight. And that way they're all even. And again, what I'll do over here is I'll just take a piece of tape and just put it around just to make sure that that, that knot doesn't come undone. And then I'll always pull this, um, I'm taking my shoots on and off, so I'll just take the end of the tape and just kind of fold it over so that when I want to pull it off, you know, I got a loose end just right there that I can just grab and unwind. Okay, so that's that end. We're gonna take the other shot cord what did I do with it? I had it. And it fell down there. <laughs> okay, so this one is going to go... One end is going to go on the nose cone. And one end is going to attach right here. Um, since we can remove this, I don't have to string it through here. You know, it is going to go through there, but I don't have to because I can just unwind it right there. Um, so again, tie your favorite knot here on the base of this. I was not a Boy Scout, so I do not know the best knots. I just use what works for me. That's why you pull on it to make sure that it's not going to come undone. Okay, so that's that end. <laughs> Almost lost it. Okay, so I'm going to put this through. All right, so now I've got my other Nomex, and this is going to be tied to that, and I do want it close to here because this is where the ejection charge is. So again, cut through the buttonhole. to here. Okay, that's good and tight. All right, so the last parachute is going to go to the nose cone. So let me just pull all this through here just to get things out of the way. Now this is the main parachute. It's a big 58 inch chute. Let's see how nice this is. Really gorgeous chute. 
Same thing as before. We're just gonna, uh, just like we did with the, uh, the drogue chute. Um, it's a little hard for me to do it here on this table. So, you know, it'd be better to do it on the floor or on the ground. I'm going to pause here and straighten out my lines. <laughs> Okay, got all my uh, cords. Again, you know, hold on to this end right here and then pull tight. All right, excellent. So that's on there finally. <laughs> We're going to take the tape, do the same as we did before, just wrap that around. Fold that over so that I can remove it later when I'm swapping out parachutes. Okay, so now my parachute is there. Um, our Nomex is down in here. Then you're going to fold your parachute. This is going to be really hard here on this table. I would fold it nicely, make sure all your corners are together. I like to do a zigzag fold like that. Squeeze out all the air and then I'm going to roll the lines up because I want I've done videos on parachutes before, and the reason I roll the lines up is just to slow down the deployment of the chute. It has to unwind before the chute will open. There's, there's a way to fold your parachutes so they open quick, and then this way, which is for slow opening. Right. And that's going to get bundled in there like a burrito. Everything's going to get shoved inside. This is the harder parachute because it's bigger, but you can see it wasn't too hard. All right, and then this one, we'll do the same thing. small. All right, here's my Nomex. And as you can see, there's this Nomex is really big for this little chute. Put it in there and wad it up really good because it's got two ejection chargers. We've got one in the motor and then one here. Okay, that will go there like that. Um, we have the plastic rivets that I showed you before. You know, you have to install those so you, have, you rotate it around until you line up your holes, put those in. Um, and then we're just about ready to launch. Um, we got to put the motor in, turn on the electronics. Um, if you have shear pins, this kit does not come with shear pins, but they would work really good on the nose cone to keep the nose cone attached. Um, some people might ask, do you need um, a vent hole 
in the bottom section, and that's not a bad idea. Um, I w if you make one, it probably be less than like an eighth of an inch, and you might like to put it near the, the rail button. Uh, we got the coupler right here, um, so we, it can't go in that area. So if you put it like below the, the rail button, you know it's gonna be fine. Um, it, if you're flying a really high thrust motor, it would be really good to put in a vent hole if it's a low thrust motor and I recommend a low thrust motor at least on the first flight um, there's probably enough leakage um, that you don't have to worry about an early separation um, so in the next video we'll talk about putting in the motor and then hopefully we can be ready to go and fly this thing so this is the level two my name is Tim Van Milligan thanks for watching may the winds be light may the skies be blue may all your rockets fly straight and true